The grand final, ladies and gentlemen. The best of five series. So far, we had best of threes. Now we're heading into the best of five. And we have a rematch. Washed up against Granite Gaming. And because washed up comes from the winner bracket, Granite Gaming from the lower bracket. Washed up gets map choice. And they get first pick, first ban for the first map here. So they chose to play on Volskaya Foundry. They immediately ban out Ty's hero. I actually think that at this point, Ty is going to be a pretty sad panda just sitting there saying, Never Tracer feels bad, man. Mayev gets banned out by Granite Gaming. And uh, let's see if this time Granite Gaming can turn this around. The last series that the two of them played against each other was so close. You could argue that Granite Gaming should have won one, if not both, of the maps that they lost. <laughs> the ban against Garrosh, so this time there's no race car Garrosh with Zarya support and a level 4 speed talent. And what's the ban on the other side? Zarya tool again? Are they gonna ban that out? Are they worried about something else? I mean, Hanzo could be banned too if you really want to. Zarya tool. Never again, Zarya tool. And washed up with the first pick. What are we gonna get? Are we gonna get that Hanzo again? Turande is also still up, and you know that Henning wants Turande if she, he can get her. So there's a chance that they're just simply saying, like, well, we pick her away. But so far they haven't really prioritized supports too much, and it is Hanzo indeed, once again. So Hanzo is taken. Honor! Honor! Sounds a little bit like an idiot, to be honest, when he repeats that. <laughs> Seems like he has, he has kind of, he, Minus, uh, sorry, I mean, Hanzo sounds a little bit like he has Tourette's when he says that. Honor! Honor! It sounds like an involuntary reflex and not quite like a statement that he drops out there. Like, I don't know. But either way, Turanda and Jaina being picked on the other side. Oh my god, who saw it coming? A Turanda pick from Henning. Unbelievable. And Svamgrota on Jaina. It is the burst here again. And obviously, Svamgrota is not the only one that can play Jaina. Keep in mind, Ty actually played the hero in the last two games. So, depending on the rest of the draft, they can definitely swap that around if they want to. There's the Anubarak pick for Billy. He's been prioritizing that a lot. And with that, we are actually seeing Smexi on Malfurion. So, a little bit of an earlier support pick this time. Allows them still to get the root out after Anubarak has the stun. Obviously, there's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, not only that we have Nature's Cure on level 7, that's also pretty sick. But the third bans. So, there's still... I mean, Hazops could go in... The thing is, like, they have the next double pick, so it's pretty difficult to say what the best ban would be. They're actually going to ban out Li Ming. Could have totally seen them also with a ban against, let's say, Reyna. But they might try and pick Reyna for themselves here instead. So we have on Volskaya Foundry now, the third ban coming through from Washed Up. And what do you ban here? If you want to control Lauba and his hero pool, and you could ban out Imperius, which he has banned quite a bit, that gives another big setup for Tirana stun. So I think Imperius would actually be a great ban here, especially given the last series that we just saw. Yep, Imperius it is. So with that, they ban out Imperius, and that limits the options for Lau by a bit, but there's still enough around. I mean, he can play ETC, for example. They even played ETC in the offlane on the last game, but Lauba has shown more than only one game where they had a main tank ETC with a Tirana stun behind it. Obviously, you can go into Johanna. You can still play Diablo here. So there are options around. It's not like this was the only one, but it was definitely a good choice to ban Imperius, I feel. There's Diablo, there comes Leoric, it's Swiffer time again as Mr. Clean is entering the arena. And the final two picks, four washed up as we're heading into our first map of the best of five. Eternal still waiting for his hero and Hazu. So are we going to see a bit of an X-Factor here or are they just going to play this pretty much standard? They could still play uh, URL with this, which we've seen before. Try and control this a bit more. Arthas and Reyna. As a double pick, might be a choice too. Ah, and completely different. We have Hazorps with Hammer. And we see Eternal playing Malfail. Alright. Hazor and Hammer. Time to get those auto attacks in. Hammer was actually banned out several times against them in the past because of Hazor's play. Not only on Battlefield of Eternity, but also Volskaya Foundry. Which is, by the way, the map where Rich brought Hammer back into the meta. Volskaya Foundry, that was the one. And now the last pick for Granite Gaming before they're heading into the first map of the series. And it's Medivh! Tie on Medivh. He's really showing a couple of new heroes today. Is that going to be the tool 
We have Leyline into Apocalypse. Could use that. We're going to find out now if Granite Gaming can take the lead this time or if Washed Up is continuing that win streak. Washed Up against Granite Gaming on World Sky Foundry. The best of five in the grand final of the Nut Cup starts on Volskaya Foundry and to the left side Malfael played by Eternal. We have Hazo Orbs on Sergeant Hammer in our first game of the grand final. Smeks on Malfurin, main on Hanzo for washed up and Sport Billy on Nuborak. And on the right side of the map it is Henning on Tyrande, Menaldor on Leoric for Granite Gaming, Ty on Jaina again. So they're switching it over here. Lauba is playing Diablo and Swam Grotta is playing Medivh. Alright, that makes a little bit more sense, especially seeing Ty and the Jaina again. From the draft it looked like Medivh would be played by Ty and that would have been a really interesting setup if they would switch it that way. But yeah, of course you can still swap and that's exactly what they did then. And with this setup we're now seeing Ty, I think for the third, for the fourth time even, on Jaina. And I mean for good reason. His, to, uh, his Tracer gets banned out quite a lot and his Turanda, uh, sorry, his uh, Li Ming and uh, his mages in general, and that includes of course Jaina, are nothing to sneeze on at all, uh, I believe. This is actually one of those things, I mean you're picking a Mediv into Malfurion and Malfurion of course with Roots can always try and control those portals. Doesn't mean that it's a hard count or anything, but it's definitely a nuisance that you have to deal with. If you move through that thing and Smexy has the root ready in time, then you will always run into a bit of a bad spot where the game could turn against you. Now this is a map where it doesn't really shock me that we're seeing it picked by Washed Up. First of all you get it out of the way, second of all if you think about it, Hazu Ops, former Team Liquid player in HTC, uh, did really, and Eternal as well, did really really love to play this particular map and they are the ones who really just dominated in the item control for the longest time and were oftentimes snowballing their games real quickly. With that said, we're having now once again Henning and Ty taking their own turret here, but that already brings us back to the top where we are seeing the play from washed up onto that healing beacon and they are going to get this one. They're even trying to get the kill. Diablo is jumping in. Well, are getting a bit aggressive here and is immediately getting punished for it. So yeah, that's going to be the healing beacon. They even get the damage out against the entire lineup on the side of Granite Gaming. Pretty much a win here for washed up as the game starts. Question of, I mean, we're talking tiny advantages, right? So you have one item, you are able to force your opponent to either half back to the Nexus or to at least go straight into the cooldown. Oh, but actually getting a lot of damage pushed onto him by House Ops and the order attacks here. But either way, the early game starts well for Washed Up. We don't have anything that will force a massive advantage yet for the first objective, but it's definitely a decent situation that they start up with. And obviously they won uh, the first match between the two teams here with a 2-0 and that was the winner bracket final where we had washed up with a 2-0 victory over their opponent. So now Henning and Ty on the right side are starting to go for their camp again. Having of course the uh, time to time that properly with the objective. We're seeing the same with Smexy and Main on the left side. Yeah, there's the scout already. You take it first and I'll take mine. And so both of them are just dancing around it. The idea is that you are trying to time the, the camp so that your opponent takes it first. In an ideal world, you want the camps to clash here if you're washed up so that your towers are helping with the defense and then you have your own remainders of the camp to push through. That's why the two supports are actually still sitting in that position and are trying to see who takes the camp first. And yep, at this point, both of them go in and just say like, all right, screw it, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Not really a big difference between it. Both of them are needed in the mid lane right now, so they kind of need to make that play right there. I mean, House Ops has now taken the position with Hammer on the partic on the uh, on the control point. We have 29% already, and it's going to be difficult to really push into this. But again, you also have Medivh, of course, and Medivh can quite quickly propel anybody in and out if need be. But those mines are already starting to stack up, and it doesn't really look like we are going to see much of an engage here from Granite Gaming. Are they actually going to give up the first? I highly doubt that. This is one of those maps where you really, really want to take the objectives. Now's up again with the gate position here, and he's just shelling the damage away against Lauba. And even the stuns from Turanda can't connect because Hazel is simply moving out of it. And obviously he has siege tactics by now too. Level 7 talents, quite a bit quicker here for the blue team as they're starting to go for their second turret. Hanzo is still at the top lane and that might actually become a bit of a concern here. Maineldor is low and we still see Hanzo topside. This is a 5 versus 4 and it ends with the death of Malfail. 
and they take the turret. Turret is stolen away. Main is a little bit late here on Hanzo to really commit to the fight. He's not going to be too happy about the death of Malthale. And if we're going to see another one right now against Billy, that would be a nightmare. But Billy actually gets saved, at least for now. And Mena is just poking away. They need Malthale, though. Without Malthale, they don't really stand a chance here. They can still poke from a distance, but they won't be able to actually commit to it. Well, they're doing it now, as they already had to rotate towards the bot side to catch some extra experience. 91% against 45 right now. Clock's ticking in favor of Granite Gaming. So starting to go for that. Once again, Billy trying to claim the spot here. Mena trying to poke. Hans Ops with the auto attacks. Here comes the engage. They're going again for Anubarak, and he nearly gets wrecked. Anub nearly getting wrecked there, but still able to survive for the time being. And that, of course, is now that the cooldown being used. And they have to play around the Tirana cooldown quite a bit, and also around Ty. But you can see that Anubarak is in trouble. Oh my god, the stun in the wall, and that is it. The beetle is dead. And it doesn't really look good for Washed Up here. Doesn't look good at all, no. With the healing beacon now also claimed, there's the first protector right there. Healing beacon, uh, turret on the ground, protector, and this is again Granite Gaming looking to redeem themselves for that winner bracket final and starting to get the lead in the best of five. And so far, they are looking solid with this. Two kills against zero. They get the lead in the game. Level 10 abilities obviously could turn this around still. This is a situation that Washed Up was trying to avoid a bit here. Uh, there's another quick hit. And Mena actually gets some damage fired against him too. Now that I think about it. That healing beacon, who used that healing beacon? I'm heavily confused right now. I thought that Washed Up actually took the healing beacon earlier. Am I wrong? Might be that Granite Gaming actually claimed it. Either way, at the end of the day, what matters is that the protector is in the hands of Granite Gaming. And so will be the early level 10. They took the fountain down. That's the important part. They didn't really get more with the wall. But we're still having that level 10 come into play any second. Yep, and there we have it. And of course, with that talent advantage, let's see if they can force something. In the middle, it doesn't look likely. Mena is still forcing that out. Maldaya needs to get away from this one, and Mena was already ready for the end too, but he does not get it right now. So, okay, once again, Hazu Ops and his boys are setting up around the healing beacon, and damn, again, Billy is down. No, he gets away! But every look at, I mean, he went from zero to pretty much 200 hit points within seconds. Every time there's a wall stun against him, it's a nightmare. But of course, having the cooldown on the ult now used by Mediv puts him at a bit of a disadvantage as we're heading into that fight. As long as the Nubura can tap at the mid lane, and he already did, they might be able to with the healing beacon here again. So they're starting to go in, starting to make the play. Again, the dive. Billy doesn't hit anything, gets hit instead, and Billy is down. And that is a bit of a trend right now. And Nuburak has a problem. Massive five-man arrow from Mena, and it actually saves Smexy. Smexy was entombed, and they're getting the five-man through. Lauba charges away and uses the portal to get out of harm's way here, but damn, son. <laughs> oh, Mena with a play. Hanzo arrow to save Malfury, and that entombed hit Malf hard. And Smexy would have fallen there for sure. But then Mena comes in and says, like, you know what? That's it, boys. I'm gonna save you right now. And that brings them to a situation where they might be behind in kills. But they still have a couple of items that they can use. Okay, here's Eternal. All right, Eternal has the healing beacon. And having also one turret. Didn't even have another one. I think Smexy. No. One healing beacon and a turret. At least something here. Another turret taken at the bottom right right now. Experience is still pretty even. I mean, this is still super close. But of course, we have so many setups right now. Think about a good ley line into a Ring of Frost, into an Apocalypse, the Entomb, the same thing. There's definitely some Wombo Combo potential on the side of Granite Gaming. <laughs> and Medivh is just doing what he does. He's just flying there. The little tattletale that could, just running around and just like reporting on everything that happens on the other side. Mom, they're here! Mom, they're taking a camp again. Mom! That's how I imagine the real voice of Medivh. It's a little bit like... A little bit like Anduin. Like really high-pitched, whiny. A little bit of a baby face. That's kind of what I think about Medivh. Yeah, back to heroes, though. I could get a little bit sidetracked with that. But yeah, if anybody saw that, that particular trailer that was playing for World of Warcraft over and over again, Anduin, Mr. Babyface himself, and that whiny, whiny little kid, that really makes you question why people would ever, ever, ever in any way 
be willing to play Alliance. I mean, if you see that kid and you don't want to smash his face in with a big Orc hammer, then you're doing something wrong in your life. Uh, but from Anduin and from Whiny Heroes over to the game and the situation that we're having unfolding in front of us. We're currently seeing level 13 talents already for the red team, but obviously Washed Up is going to have their 13 just a few seconds later. They don't have the Fountain at the top side, which is their big disadvantage. Outside of that though, they're ready for the fight and they are starting to go straight in for it because they have inevitable blend now on Malthael. Having be I mean, they kind of need to make the engage happen, right? Anubarak isn't really a uh, sustained hero in the sense that he can take the damage as, for example, Diablo or Gurush. So you want to be a little bit more aggressive around this, and this is currently just not happening. Instead, it's Lauba who is initiating the plays all the time and smashing Anubarak into a wall. And he is just pretty much putting the beetle between a rock and a hard place, or if you're going to the cockroach attempt, between a shoe and a hard place, which is the ground. So, as long as Lauba gets these engages, Billy is gonna suffer, especially with heading just mi not missing a single, single stun here the entire time. Uh, yeah, well, still looking for an engage, and there it is. An inevitable end already being used, Eternal moving away from this, but here comes the Beetle trade again, but this time heading is not ready. This time isn't ready, the stun comes a second too late, and that's all that they had to do. Now Billy has a chance to see if he can maybe make that move. 55% in their favor gets the stun in, but he can't tap. He relies on Smexy. Smexy is the only one who can heal him up. There's no fountain. Quest completed. Baseline for Swankorota is in. But they just don't find the opening. They don't find the opening here. Lauba is positioning himself perfectly as a buffer between the opponent and the backline. And he is kept in play over and over again by Henning. And he is the big aggression that they have now. Where's the commitment? Where's the setup? Where's the Lane and Seal? Where's the Entomb? Where's the Ring of Frost? They're not going for it yet. Hazops again, moving away, pushing Diablo out as he's engaging with a portal. But we don't see any massive commitments just yet. But Granite Gaming has taken over the control of that point. Malta in, Ring of Frost, and it doesn't hit anything. The Ring of Fail in this setup. Here comes the Apocalypse. Hazop with the Siege Tactics, Eternal alive. Nice shield on Henning. Oh, the arrow missing completely, but at least for the time being, Washed Up chased Granite Gaming away from the point. They are taking control again. They are still looking healthy, but of course, there comes Granite Gaming. They could tap at the fountain, and that's exactly what they did. The poke from Main is starting to come in. Maineldor on the point once more. Medivh in the air, looking for the port, looking for the engaged here. Tai has to be careful. Billy stuns again the attempts to drop Hazu, but it just doesn't work out for them. And every time that portal comes, Smexy is ready for the root on the ground. Overtime, 99% for the two of them. And again, they're starting to move in. Not a single item is left anymore, and it looks like they're actually disengaging here. And yes, they are. This is gonna be the first protector for Washed Up. They get it. They actually get it. They have the protector. They've won the fight. They didn't have the fountain, but they take the objective. And immediately Hanzo, on the same path, starts to rotate towards the middle and make sure that he catches the experience there. Rest of the team busy at the top lane, trying to push through here. Damage output. Hanzo sitting at nearly 50,000 with Hammer. One auto attack at the time. And keep in mind that for Hazu, we are actually now having the hyper cooling engines on level 13. But just think for a second how Lauba feels about the 16 talent that is soon going to be ready for Sergeant Hammer. Oh yeah, giant killer baby. That's when we're going to see Diablo suffer at the hands of this. Uh. <laughs> Alright, that's, that's top tactics right there. This is like next level plays that we're currently seeing. Keep the fort standing. Nah, someone's gonna get it. Leyline is being used just as an escape tool as they're moving away. Someone will eventually go to the top lane to drop that fort. Looks like an Uberug is going to deliver. But I think they were thinking, okay, this is definitely a goner. Now Hanzo has got the experience. There's the 16 now. And the fort at the top lane has indeed fallen. And there it is, the giant killer. Have fun playing Diablo right now. Swam Grotta, oh my god, nearly goes down. Diablo with the engage, the stun, they go for Smexy, and the tranquility is there, and the Ring of Frost doesn't connect with him. Smexy is still alive, here comes the arrow for Main, and this time it hits, it hits Henning in the back line, but Swam Grotta helps them to move away. Ford goes down, 16 versus 16, only three kills still. But the structural advantage goes to washed up. They have it.
They didn't get a kill yet, but they're starting to really pressure, especially Diablo, more and more with all those talents that they're getting right now. And Epicenter, of course, is just going to add to the aggression that we could see around the Nuburak now that we're having the 16 talents on both sides. He's not the only one that really has great talents here. We're having another healing beacon, by the way, taken, uncontested in this case, from the team in uh, red. But there's the royal focus now. And power also coming in, and camps are taken, and therefore more items claimed by both of them in an attempt to prepare for the next objective, which is going to spawn bot side. And that lane hasn't been prepared yet by any of the teams. We still have the two fountains there. A slight lead in experience, which is going to increase thanks to the passive experience that we're seeing now because of the fort that has been dropped at the top lane. Yeah, here's the, uh, the damage output. Just, just look at the difference between the hero damage on the side of the red team and what we're seeing for washed up. But the kills are telling a different story. Lauba himself with 24,000 damage, by the way. More than Jaina, for example. Like, he's been playing fantastic. The amount of wall stuns that he already got were pretty solid. And he's doing really well at that front line. Lauba is playing a fantastic game with that hero. But they're starting to fall slowly behind. It's pretty much still even, but Diablo is now having a much tougher time, especially because of Sergeant Hammer. And has Ops has so far not really been attacked. There we go, again, weaving the damage in. And Lauba moves away. But every time you see that portal coming, every time the root is ready, every time Hazo positions himself so he can push them out, uh, Anubara gets attacked, Boru charges away, keeps those talents ready, over and over again. <laughs> and it's getting dicey. Martha at the bottom, Hansa has doing, done some work to going for the camp for themselves. 18 is already in. And it feels like this is just going to be a super prolonged game again. It reminds me a little bit of the Infernal Shrine match that the two teams played against each other in the series in the, the winner bracket. Winner bracket final. <laughs> I mean, this is starting to get pretty much the same. It's uh, so close. It's so intense. And one kill can change the outcome. Bottom shrine, bottom control point is going to be revealed in just a sec. Diablo is already looking for an angle here, looking for a play. Won't find anyone though. Billy, the one in the middle, everybody else already rotating. Bot side, Eternal is sitting there. They have the slight lead. They will get the earlier level 20 if this trend continues. Might even get it for the next or for this particular shrine. And that would be bad for Granite Gaming. Going up against Storm Talons when your opponent is fighting for the next protector. I mean, it looks pretty much like we're going to see a fourth protector no matter what might even be more. I mean, you look at the map and you see that there's a single four taken out. This is not really typical for World Sky or Foundry. But the points are ticking, and this is really where Washed Up is starting to get the lead. Billy again at the front here gets the shield out. Lauber is starting to make the moves. Eternal is still sitting there. And Lauber just wants to go for the engage. And we're waiting for Wombos. We are waiting for that ley line. We're waiting for that Entomb. We're waiting for that Ring of Frost follow-up. The Apocalypse. All that AoE. And if it's survived by Washed Up, then they have a good chance. Because the longer the fight lasts, the better for them. But it's those quick kill attempts that we're seeing with the Wombo combo potential that can lead Granite Gaming to victory. 82% already. They can't just... Well, they could give it up. But it comes at a cost. And I'm not quite sure you're willing to pay that. Yeah, but they do. They let it slide. They let it slide for now. They're saying like, guys, nuts, we don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have the engage. Don't force it. And here comes the attack. That's going to be the level 20 and it's going to be the map opened up. But it is definitely going to come to a fourth one here. There's no chance that this is going to be a three protector game, which is actually not that uncommon. But we are very, very likely looking at a fourth. They're already pushing through the bot lane and they're obviously trying to get the massive lead now through the keep. Leo is looking for the 20 at the top side. The experience isn't just there. This is a very, very cautious game from both of them. It's the start of the best of five. And yep, there's the cocoon. Cocoon is in. They're trying to get the kill. They're trying to get the kill right now. Roots are on the ground. Diablo, one stun, two stun, but the portal is right on him. But the keep is down. Keep is down. Catapults are going to keep spawning at the bot lane. They're going to go for a noob and he moves out. Ah, well, there's the Entomb. No level 20 just yet. But Leo actually gets locked down. Turanda is dead. Can they go for the core after all? Can they really make the play? Can they maybe go for it? They're looking for it. They're looking for the second kill. And if they find it, they can go for the core. They're already trying to drop at least a few points of it. The shield is going to drop here. And Hazops in the back line now has level 20. And that, of course... Oh, the old Meldor! Ooh, nearly dying here. Nearly falling, but Hazop gets the damage in now. Hazops has the Ultra Capacitators. And he's working the damage in. Here comes the Apocalypse. Are they getting the kill against Malf? They don't! Not even with the Ring of Frost! 
And the arrow of Hanzo is able to nearly drop the Swap Grotta and the core might even fall here. Oh my god, we're actually not even seeing the fourth protector here. Nope. Instead, we're having Jaina about to die. Lauba is low, he's running away, and Hazo just doesn't give a shit and goes for the core and drops it. This is game. This is game. Washed Up is taking it and are claiming the victory in the first game of the best of five. Infernal Shrines, our second map, washed up against Granite Gaming. And if you think, well, wait a second, this is a little bit of a deja vu that we're having here right now because I've seen this before. And you kind of might have because we're actually looking at a game where we have a rematch. Washed up already faced off against Granite Gaming in uh, the winner bracket final. That's when Washed up took the 2 0 victory. Granite Gaming right now is heading into uh, the second map of the grand final. After Washed Up just took the victory in Volskaya, they're very going to be very determined to make this a quick 2-0 to get a massive lead in this series. And I highly doubt that Granite Gaming is going to get through with those Zarya shenanigans again with Vala. They were able to kind of surprise Washed Up a little bit on the first time that they played here, but I don't think that's going to be quite the case. Washed Up might let some of that stuff through, but they're not going to be surprised by it anymore and might actually adjust their own drafting to really meet that. Now Zeratul is banned out, Tracer still gets banned out against Ty. You still don't want to deal with this. They're just saying, alright, let's make sure that this is not going to be a thing. Let's not deal with that Tracer. <laughs> Ty again, he's just going to be a sad panda for a long, long time. Uh, but let's see. Heading with, the first, uh, well, heading with the first pick once that we have the next ban phase through. And it could actually be the Turanda first pick for him again. They've done this so many times now. Sport Billy. It's an Uberrock band against him. So, yep. And with that, we have washed up with a chance to ban off Tyrande if they want to make sure that Henning doesn't get this. But then again, what do you really ban out here, right? Is that, li is that the linchpin? Is that the one hero where you say, okay, this is determining it all? You could ban Tyrande. You could focus Lauba a little bit more and say, okay, you're banning out, let's say, Imperius, for example, again. Or you are dealing, you know, don't want to deal with Garrosh. But it's the Maiev instead that they are getting rid of right now. Banning out Mayev, still allowing a Tyrande first pick if Granite Gaming really wants her. And so far, they have prioritized her very, very heavily. This time it's Hanzo, though. Swam Grota goes for Hanzo, which leaves a Tyrande Jaina setup for Washed Up if they wanted. Could play that card. Maybe have a little bit more than that, but that's definitely one of the moves that they have available to them right now. Especially the Jaina here. So you already know that there's a good chance that we might see Jaina on the other side here again. So I wouldn't really mind if they pick her away. There's Tyrande and Diablo first of all with it. Okay, Billy goes for Diablo. Don't want to give that over to Lauba. Can't really blame them for that either. And well, let's see what the next pick pattern is here. I mean, we still don't have the support for Henning. And now that his Tyrande is taken away, he might switch it over into Malfurion for example. That's also, for me personally, a question, do you take Jaina away now? Do you go and say, okay, Ty, take the Jaina. Do that. Uh, that's the Malfurion. And Lauber goes for the early Imperius. Okay, have to try and control that a little bit. Now, keep in mind, the last time that they played Imperius, they actually had a, an off-lane ETC that they used uh, from Eneldor, which worked really well against Team Russia. That might, that's obviously a series that washed up watched, right? Like, they, they looked at that series and they said, like, okay, how do we deal that? Different map, granted. Was on Dragonshire. But what exactly does washed up ban now? Arthurs, okay. Get rid of Arthurs here, which will, of course, also be a good combo with Reyna if you let that through. For that off lane on Infernal Shrines. And Arthurs actually is really great on the shrine itself because he can dominate around that really, really nicely. Ah, uh, there's so much to ban right now from Grand Gamer's perspective. Jaina, Gul'dan, pretty much all the mages that are being played by Mena. Then you have also Reyna to consider. You really want to deal with that. And they ban Jaina out. Okay. It, it just makes sense. You have so much burst damage around this. We've been talking about this in every single series, I feel. And for good reason. Jaina is amazing these days. Which is actually pretty cool. It was a time when Jaina didn't really make it into the drafts at all. And now that we're having her back... 
still a lot of fun. Rings, if they come through, are pretty awesome to watch. It's a lot of explosive stuff that she can deliver in these fights. But yeah, so with that said, washed up. There's URL and Falstad. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit different from the time when we saw coming through play against washed up. So yeah, that's not really the thing that's going to happen here. So we're not going to see those Hazwops gusts into the corner with J with the Nano Booster Jaina anymore. I think that ship has sailed. Mena is not going to have that particular orgasm play once more. But we still have Mena with, of course, the damage that he can get through through Gul'dan. Kelthas. Depends a lot on what actually is being picked now on the side of Granite Gaming, I feel. And we have Junkwit and we have Malthael. And not really a lot of stuns. I mean, they have Imperius and then the follow-up through Malfurion. Could even think about just delivering with Junkrat and adding on to the displacement, honestly. But what's Mane gonna pick now? That's gonna be the choice for Mane here with that setup. They still need quite a bit more burst. And Gul'dan worked really well for them in the previous game. Especially, of course, around the Horrifice that he had. But it is Kalthas, Fire Mage. Some people want to see the world burn. Mane is one of them. Loves that hero. And it's going to showcase that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we're heading into game number two in the best of five grand final of the Nut Cup. As we have washed up in the lead against Granite Gaming. And they're eager to make that a 2-0 lead over their opponent. Let's find out if they can pull it off. Game number one ended in favor of Washed Up. Now in the second game, they're going to try and make this a 2-0 lead to get far, far ahead in the grand final of the Nut Cup. To the left, Washed Up with Sport Billy on Diablo, Hazorps on Falstead, Main on Kel'thas, Eternal on Urel, and Smexy on Toronto. And on the right side of the map, Granite Gaming in red with Henning on Malfurion. Tai on Junkrat, Meneldor on Malthael, Swam Grotta on Hanzo, and Lauba on Imperius once again. And that Kelthas here, already heading, of course, straight into Mana Addict. Only true talent on level 1, right side of Plet Mode's like Quick Match. Interesting enough, Soul Shield actually taken here for uh, Billy. I like it, the adjustment against the opponent's draft. Trying for the survivability. And obviously, we're having the Wingman build for Hazu. Well, they could go out attack build, but oh, Menador goes down. Billy on the other hand. Oh, yeah, he gets killed too. But you can already tell how difficult that setup can be to play against from the perspective of Granite Gaming. If you have a Diablo engage, a Turan is done after the flip over, and then on top of that a gravity lapse that gets synced, then you are in trouble. It's just these CC chains that can be so incredibly powerful that they have to deal with right now. The counter kill on the other hand was exactly what Granite Gaming needed here, so they opened the game up with a bit of a bang. Now House Ops, as I said, went into Wingman and is very likely going to continue with the Lightning Rod build that we've seen a few times now. We can still make the play into the auto attack build and in previous games, for example against coming through, he did exactly that. But for now we are seeing that outside of this just him going into wingman. And that allows of course you to be a bit more aggressive around the mercenary camps of your opponent. Steal maybe those shaman camps away here. That would be a good use of that. And talking about the camps, we're having both of the teams already starting to focus on their Kazura camps here in the middle and trying to deliver here. Hazo Ops already catching the experience in the middle, making sure that they are not losing out on that. Main, of course, working heavily on his globe talent on level 1. Once you have that, the survivability increases heavily, and Smexy is just running away on his little pocket chihuahua right there. <laughs> making sure that uh, at least Lauba is not getting the kill. And, well, talking kills, we're actually having one to the top lane as Hazo Ops flew in, uses the global, and with the help of Eternal, drops another target. So, job well done as Goat Girl is just jumping around with the space bunny and damn hanzo is falling now too now my apologies for missing those two it's getting a little bit late tournament so far has been nine hours already and yeah especially the global that we saw from Hazops made this a bit of a quick rotation that i didn't quite catch on the main my apologies for that in the middle of the map, Mena, again, still going to try and play... First of all, I mean, he's going to try and wave clear. He's going to try and make sure that whenever the rotation comes, they're going to lock that down. He's also, of course, attempting to get as many of these globes as he can, just so that he gets that shield quickly. And they're all prepping for the first objective. And when it comes to wave clear, both of the teams have a lot of tools. This is actually some experience that's going to be lost. It's actually one minion that they dropped, nothing more than that. 
having Mena already busying himself together with Sport Billy at the Shaman camp towards the top. Hazu is moving in and immediately uses the first bribe stack right there. He actually makes a bit of a hybrid build here with hammer gains chosen on level 4 for the auto attacks. But now that the shrine is active, Junkrat can poke from the outside. Billy is already starting to suffer a bit at the hands of Lauber as he goes in and impales him quickly with that lunge. Hazob still battling it out, but he needs to be really careful. Hazob's actually incredibly low. Smexy is keeping him alive for now, but here comes another quick lunge. But the gravity laps, the stun. Oh, and they go for the wall stun attempt, but they don't get it. Eternal is there, but Lauber drops. Well done. Washed up, they get another kill. Four kills against one, and now the level seven talents in their hands to burn flesh on level seven for Mena, but they have given up the Punisher in the meantime. So they get the kill, but as the rest of Granite Gaming focuses heavily on those minions on the shrine, they are not able to get the objective itself. But they still have the lead in uh, talent, so there's not really a whole lot that Granite Gaming can do with a push. And they're already starting to go for another tower up there. But this one is getting burned down really quickly. So from a position with structures, it's still pretty much fairly the same here. We're having down to the bottom of the map, Kelthas currently doing his thing. Just burning all of this down. Now on the other hand, Hanzo is trying to jump away from that aggression that we're seeing from Billion Smex. In jumps right into the hands of Eternal. Eternal himself is not looking too happy though. And Urel goes down. Goat Girl eliminated here. Yeah, that's Granite Gaming fighting back. They have not the fondest memories of the last time. Oh, the double hit here quite away, but Lauber also is pushed. Oh my god, they actually get the full kill. They push him into the range of the fort, and then Smexy with a perfectly timed stun is able to lock him down long enough for the rest of the team to bring the damage in. And we are continuing that trend. Swam Grotta is also getting attacked here. Smexy is just hitting these stuns like there's no tomorrow. Six already secured. Five minutes into the game. And Mena is on 13 stacks for his level one. In the meantime, Maynaldor is trying to deal with Hazop's top side. It's always annoying when you're a melee character that goes up against the range. But Maynaldor, of course, has a couple of tools he can throw up against the bird here. Problem is that Eternal is also sitting in the bushes and just waiting for a chance to engage. Uh, Tai with Junkrat. Has so far not really had an opportunity to make a lot of plays around the mine and the displacement here. If he's able to get Sport Billy out of position or Mena, that would of course be the dream, try and get the quick kills in. Especially since we're having on level 4 the strangling mines von Malfurion, so that's definitely a big help. Hazops has to move back, nearly died topside, but is with the global able to go back onto the lane if need be. And they have the early level 10, and they're making the play for Tai, but they cannot get the kill. And there's Billy again. Against Lauber. <laughs> May never the Pyro Blast. Pyro baby. No Phoenix in this game. Uh -uh. Yeah, get the Pyro Blast. Get the Mighty Gust again. Also, a lot more fire. Let it burn, baby. As the Lightning Breath is quite in there. And that's going to help them, of course, on those shrines. Also, not only to toast the heroes, but also to get a few more minion stacks. Talking about stacks, Middledore is getting farmed up at the top. Hazwops and Eternal are dropping another one of the red team's heroes, and that comes just before the level 10 is ready. Just before the level 10 is in. So now we're having Billy and his boys starting to make the play for the camp. Without Maynador being there on Malfail, that's an issue. Providing vision, of course, would also allow them to maybe even drop at that particular one. Yeah. Oh, the arrow! Oh, Hazu is down. They get the kill against Hazorps, and here comes the lightning breath. Lava just simply jumps on the other side. He doesn't care, but he might care about Urella. She moves in, and that is Laupa falling. Yeah, not even Henny can keep him alive here. And here's the Pyroblast, by the way. <laughs> Pushed into the wall. And Hansa is a sad but dead panda. So is Urel. Uh, that was a bit of a delayed kill, but they get it. And talking kills, uh, Ty. Ooh, barely gets out. Um, Force that flies in. They're not done yet. They're trying to get even more damage in. Maynaldor is all of a sudden starting to drop. And Henning has a lot to do to keep everybody in play here. But boy, are we having a fiesta on our hands. In comes Maynard with a quest completion. That's making him a lot safer. But of course, we have already seen a long time ago that that shrine topside has spawned. But nobody really cared about it because we were brawling mid lane. And now we're looking at four kills against eight. And an early start into the shrine from Washed Up. Billy gets healed by Smexy. 
There comes the vision, but they have eight stacks already, and they have both teams actually. And the shaman camp starting to move top side. Uh oh, Lauba actually misses it. Gets pushed into a wall. Lunges in. Is now on cooldown. 14 against 2, 15. Still poking with Hazops in particular, but the position is about to be taken by Granite Gaming. They're trying to be aggressive here. And we don't have the ults ready yet on the side of Washed Up, and that's a bit of an issue. In comes the play against Lauva, but the arrow, oh, hitting the backline, hitting also Mane. Oh, and he doesn't die. No, the last rides doesn't get the kill. The rip tire is also taken out. Billy is low, and they can just simply move back and tap again. Eternal creates some space. But at this point, we're having Mena also about to have Pyroblast ready. If he finds a target, he will definitely try and drop that. He's near. He's back to full HP right now. In comes the attack against Diablo, and Dibbles is about to fall. It stays alive for longer, but they get the counter kill against Imperius. Imperius is dead. Mena already dropped his ult onto Swamp Grotta, but he didn't die. And they're still fighting tooth and nail for the next Punisher here. Both of them are so close. Henning is low, and he's down. Henning dead already, Turana pushed away, but Malthale falls. 11 kills against 5, 13 talents in their hands, and this should also be a secured objective by them. They're even going in for a kill against Ty, and it looks like they get it. Yes, the stun doesn't connect, but it doesn't even matter. Junkrat is dead, 12 kills to 5, and the Mortar Punisher through the top lane now. And that is looking fantastic at this point for Wash Up. Billy again using the minion, trying to get close enough to Swamp Grotta to get the kill in there. But there's the fly, and oh, <laughs> straight into the hands of Eternal. And Goat Girl uses the hammer and just knocks that skull open. Hanzo is not gonna do anything here. Yep, nicely done here. Hazop's flying in, forcing the movement out of Hanzo, and he jumps right into the hands of Urel, who just says, thank you very much, buddy, I got it from here, and delivers the final blow. Job well done. And that, of course, is now 13 kills against 5. Now, they are really starting to rock the numbers and experience. And just look at that mid lane. They are absolutely destroying right now. And with minions on the way, if they can put a bit more damage onto the fort itself. They might not quite get it. They're getting close here. Arrow against 2. Rip tire. Ooh, Smexy! And also Diablo. Both of them about to fall. Smexy is actually saving himself for a bit longer. But I don't think he's going to make it the entire time. Nope. That's a double kill right there. False dead. Still trying to see if he can maybe get a kill himself, but Ty already moved away from this one. And that was without 13 talents. That was actually without the 13 talents, yeah. Hazu. Whoa. <laughs> juke, baby. But you can't juke that shit. Nope. That's the end of the bird. Bird's the word, and that's the kill. 8 against 13. Ah, <laughs> eternal. Eternal jumps around like an angry, uh, like an angry teenager here, and yeah, has to drop the ult. Not quite sure why he actually jumped in for this in the first place. I don't think he could really have done anything here, but he's nearly getting 16 for his team. And to be fair, I mean, yeah, those kills definitely hurt washed up, but they're still fairly ahead in this. Mena, by the way, in 13 with the Pyromaniacs so going into the cooldowns. And, well, talking damage, by the way, as the 16 talents come in, Mena continues the build with Ignite. So, Flame Strike on 20 would be great to stay at a distance and simply drop the damage through that. And look at the damage output here. Ural is sitting actually at 19k, Falls at 19,000 as well. And Mena so far only having 17,000. Couldn't really deliver as much as he really wanted. The map isn't quite as open as you would think, too. I mean, we have the top four taken out. But there's not really much more than that happening just yet. Mid lane has taken some damage. Bot lane is still pretty fine. There's still a tower there. It, does that thing even have a hit point? Do you see any rat on that bar? I mean, that is pretty much negative hit points right there. That's pretty much cheating. I'm not quite sure how Granite Gaming does that, but yeah, they are tricking that tower somehow. Uh, but either way, 16 will be around for Granite Gaming in time to fight over the next objective here which is going to be the important one, so... Uh, let's see... Yeah, Hazel's already at the top side. Arrow... Ooh, yeah, that hits, and it's not the only one that hits. Lauba connects immediately too. Yeah, even the Mighty Gust committed for this one. Mainado was low, but the rest of the team was rotating in, and guess who's at the bot lane? Yep, Mainado was still pushing out the lane here. Alright, there's the tower down. 
That was pretty much, that wasn't even an attack. One of those minions just farted at the tower and the tower crumbled. That's pretty much what happened there. Told you, that thing didn't have any hit points whatsoever. Like none, like l literally none. And there's our shrine. And already at the bot lane, that wall is open. So pretty much whoever wins this, very likely to take the uh, the fort itself. Hazorps is going to take this, time it. Let's try and do that properly. Both of them actually take it pretty much at the same time. So they're going to meet in the middle here. Ah, Junkrat is down. Junkrat is down. Living bomb value, baby. And now this is, of course... I mean, this is really the shittiest scenario that you could possibly be in if you're going to game. You're playing a great game. You're getting your kills. You're getting your experience back. You're finally getting 16 just in time for the next shrine. And then just before it starts, one of your heroes gets picked on the map. And now they're trying to hunt false that top side, but Hazobs already knows that something is coming his way, so he's already playing it as safe as he possibly can. But that is just super frustrating for Granite Gaming. Washed Up is sitting at 1-0 lead in the best of 5 series already, and they are now getting a free Arcane Punisher right here, which is going to move through that bot lane like a hot knife through butter, and will take down probably a lot more than only that Ford. I mean, the minion wave is moving in with a Punisher, Falsa can fly in, and their dream would, of course, be to take the key, but at least the wall is something they should be able to accomplish. So, yeah, with that, we're now having also the push straight to the bottom. And, I mean, look at this. 84% still on the Punisher. Arcane Punisher at that. Easy peasy. So now we're having Falstead escorting a few more into the mid lane. He has the global. He can always move in very easily. So that's another fort destroyed. And in the same time, we're seeing the jumps down here. And they're going to try and make a play around the Punisher and at least open up the wall. And that's something that they're already doing. I'm not sure if they can get the key, but I highly doubt it, to be honest. But killing both of the forts is already a big win. And if they find an opening with the next Punisher jump, they're going to take it. Gravity Labs misses. Tries to get the damage against Lauba. They get some. They're starting to attack also. Menodor again with Ignite, still spreading the bombs. Ooh, that was actually a long distance launch. And there's the ult, but it only hits Urel, and that's not the hero you want. You're not gonna get a kill against Urel, I'm sorry. Mighty Gust has been used, better safe than sorry play by Falstead, but yeah, Urel even had her ult still up. Another stun attempt. Ooh, they go for Lauba. Empiris is actually stunned into the wall, and there's a lightning breath. 20 isn't there, but there's the kill against Diablo. Both of the tanks fall. <laughs> oh, and Mene gets the kill with a Pyroblast. Malthail is dead, and it's the end of Henning as well. Not even the Riptire is making any plays here. So still jumping in. Eternal doesn't care. Barely the escape from Ty. <laughs> actually moved back into the mine, into the heroes, just to get out of this and made it work. Still survived through that, but yeah. Every bone in his body probably told him, just run, buddy, run. But nope, he moves back in, kind of pulls himself away. False death with a quick fly onto Hanzo and get wrecked, kid. They're trying to make the play for uh, Ty, and that's the end of Junkrat. With that, we're having the, ca the keep taken down, and they're going for the core. <laughs> Wash up was totally willing to move away from this, and then Granite Gaming engaged because they wanted to have the fight before level 20, and it all of a sudden turned against them. They get all wiped, and now it's the play for the core. Lauba getting attacked again. Maenaldor is trying to make some plays. Again, Wrath being used, but the core goes down, and that is the end of game number two as Washed Up. They take the 2-0 lead in the best of five grand final. A 2-0 lead in the best of five, everybody. This might actually be the last map. Dragon Shire is the map. And Granite Gaming, they are kind of desperate to put a point onto the scoreboard for themselves here. But so far, Washed Up have dominated pretty heavily. And if you consider the... Uh, if you're actually considering the score that the two teams had after the winner bracket final, then Washed Up has today achieved a 4-0 against Granite Gaming already. At this point, of course, the only thing that really counts are the maps that you win in the grand final, and their Washed Up leads with a 2-0, so one more win, and they are the Nutcrackers, the champions of the Heroes of the Storm tournament here today. Well, with that, we're having also Zeratul banned out early on again. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Ty is still not going to get to ban his tra to play his tracer. 
Uh, but what else do you uh, ban out? The last time I actually saw Nubarak being banned. So Granite Gaming is trying to find some kind of weakness in the draft pattern of Washed Up. But banning out a Nubarak hasn't really helped them there. Now you're playing a different map now. You're playing on Dragonshire. And if you look at the picks and bans, you're already seeing that with the first pick and the first ban on the side of Granite Gaming, the map choice is from Washed Up. So they decided to play a map where you can really rotate around and also use globals like Dehaka, like Falstad. And let's not forget that they actually played Dragonshire already once earlier today with Vikings. So Vikings are all of a sudden a concern that you have. Washed Up is in a situation where they could play with all of those and let's see how they're gonna make it uh, work. Turanda gets actually picked on uh, the first rotation again for Henning. Again, they are all... It's not only about Henning getting those um, stuns and everything. It's just the team really sent us a lot of their goals, uh, a lot of their plays and a lot of their initiation around the Turanda follow-up stun and them trying to get a kill. And I would say that there's a good chance that Washed Up is even banning out Imperius on the third ban. Don't necessarily have to ban him, but Imperius together with Turanda seems like a really annoying setup here. Um, for Gunner Gaming. It was already a problem in the last game and that was without Turanda. Now we have Billy on Garrosh and we have Mena on Jaina and that alone is already a bit terrifying. So really cool heroes to make plays here. Now there are of course still arguments of okay what can we play against Garrosh? Do we f maybe at some point go for Jimmy and Reyna? Make sure that the pending training round is ready to just push Garrosh away whenever he tries to make the engage happen. Could be the setup. Li Ming and Anubarak are immediately taken. Now with Li Ming already picked, it also means that you can't pick her against Anubarak with Cocoon. Chance of that would have been slim anyways, because Double Mage isn't really played that much. It has been seen, has been played occasionally, but not that often. So, now the bans. I mean, Anubarak means that you don't necessarily have to ban out Imperius anymore, because Lauba already committed to a hero. So instead you could target the offlane. Which they do. Take Leoric away. Leoric banned out. And what else do you get rid of? Ooh, insta ban against the Vikings. Okay, they definitely watched the games earlier and said like, Nope, ain't happening. That is not happening today. And there's a double pick for the blue team. And washed up, I mean, they still need something for Smexy. They need something for Azu. Eternal on the offlane. Likely to pick Eternal. I, I mean... Eternal's pick would really be good here because uh, once you wait, Granite Gaming will pick an offlaner for themselves and take another choice away from you. Yep, there we have it. Again, Urel, Goat Girl is in. Smexy is picking Anna, and you all know what that means. Nano boosted Jaina. What have we seen with Nano boosted Jaina? Huh. Falls up with a mighty gust into a corner to allow Mana to just destroy everything. Is that going to be the case? Is that going to be the play? We could, we could honestly see that again. False that would fit onto the map. You have again wingman, uh, with wingman value. You don't even have to pick them. But the global alone is already giving you an edge. And we have Greymane, Thrall Greymane. Now Greymane is seen a bit more often these days, but he doesn't really have a win rate that necessarily supports that. He has been suffering quite a bit and has struggled in a lot of these matches. But there's of course a lot of reset potential right now. The continuous poke with Greymane, the delivery, Li Ming can also like poke, soften them up, allow Greyman to go in, for, maybe go for the throw, maybe even the bullet against Garrosh. And then if you get the kill, the resets for Li Ming are going to be there. But what's Hazel going to pick? Is that still a scenario where you would go yeah, into the, the bird? Nah, you go for another bird. You go for Medivh. You go for the little raven that could, and that is just going to try and make sure that no one dies and no one gets the resets for Li Ming. That said, Game number three, everybody. We have Medivh in action. Dragonshire has the map. 2-0 lead for Washed Up as they are trying to crown themselves the Nutcrackers, the champions of the Nut Cup. Game number three, everyone. We have Washed Up. One map win away from claiming the title of the Nut Cup for crowning themselves the Nutcrackers. Main on Jaina on the left side here for the team in blue. Hazops on Medivh. Eternal on Urel. We have Sport Billy on Garrosh this time and Smexy on Anna. And on the right side, Granite Gaming so far still looking for that victory against Washed Up today. We have Henning on Toronto again, Maynaldo on Thrall, Lauba on Anubarak, Tai on Liming, and Swam Grotta on Greymane. Well, let the show begin. Let's see if Greymane finds the value this time. 
level one talent again with the legion of beetles i've seen this these days a little bit more often as we already explained earlier but also nice attempt here for the kill but talking about kills yep they go straight for Menildor. One of the things that we haven't talked about during the draft, but which I want to highlight, is that obviously one of the things that's really annoying with that combo that we're seeing for Washed Up is not only the Nano Boost Jaina, it is Medivh together with Garrosh. Because if you can portal Garrosh into that backline for a quick taunt, it's really, really annoying. That can be a kill right there. Of course, Hazorps is at the same... Ooh, could that be a kill? Nice, deep push. I think Minotaur should be able to get away from this. Body blocks, how good are they? Too good! Down he goes! Nice kill, well done. Uh, that's the kill that they wanted, and they get it. Smexy in the meantime is all his own in the middle of the map, and he's like, hey team, I need a little bit of help here, and he definitely is gonna get it. But of course, another thing that we now have is also quest talents that are currently being worked on. And that means that amongst other things, we're seeing Medivh trying to get the stacks together for the baseline. The level 1 choice on Thrall with the Echo of Elements, he's working on that too. But that little death at the top lane, it did definitely not help that cause. Uh, Nuburag is checking this out, but currently Lauba and his boys are starting to struggle here a bit. Now you have to keep in mind, we have been at this tournament for a long time now. I mean, I myself have now been casting for 10 hours without a break. And all of those players have been playing for a long time too. They might have had the occasional game where they had to wait, but it still starts to drain you at some point. So considering that we're this long into the tournament, there's definitely a couple of arguments to be made to overlook the occasional mistake that could happen here. But so far we've seen great combos, we've seen great games, and we have seen a lot of action today with fantastic plays. And one play here in the middle might lead to the first Dragon Knight of the match here, of Dragonshire. But it looks like with the rotation here mid-side, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Too many interrupts around. Level 4 talents now also ready for both of them. At the bot lane though, we have Mene going up against Tai. And well, unfortunately for Tai, that's not the only hero that really wants to kill him. Yep, Ana comes in too, and that's the end of Liming right there. Ah, the game is not really starting off well for the red team, is it now? Of course, it doesn't really help that Urel is one of the best heroes for the top lane when we're looking at Dragonshire in particular. And that little jump over the debris here is exactly the reason why. As Urel, you have an easy time of moving between the objective and the lane and that allows you to always hold experience but also hold the objective itself. And of course, the self-sustain that you have with Urel is another really big argument for that. Mena with the attempt, Tai with the combo, but look at Lauba, he is far out here, and all those beetles, they might soak some of the damage, but they don't soak it all, but he's still able to get away, or is he? They make the play for Smexy, can't get the kill there, but look at Menaldor, oh, 200 hit points as he goes away, yeah. That could have been a kill for both of the teams here, Ooh, very close call for sure. But at least bot side, we're now seeing one shrine taken over by Granite Gaming. They haven't really won a game yet against Washed Up, and they're trying to change that now. But it's not being made easy by any means. 11 stacks also, 3 minutes and 30 seconds into the game for Menaldor. Not really where you want to be with Thrall at that point in time. He can't get any stacks, and look at Ethernal. Ethernal is wrecking him here on the lane. And in the meantime, the bottom of the map doesn't really look any better. Billy, of course, has suffered a bit of damage, but Smex is now healing that up, and they're reclaiming. The Shrine. That means that mid lane is going to get the focus, but Maynaldor, he can't really do anything. I mean, look at this. Thrall is sitting there. He's still sitting at only 12 stacks, and he's just saying, okay, how do I do this? I need a rotation. I need help. I need someone coming in for this. I need a gank. And Swam Grotta is trying to comply. The problem is they still can't make the play there. They're pressured on every single avenue. And yep, Henning is also dropped to half HP pretty much. We're still having the double pressure through those shrines taken towards the mid lane since the Dragonite is always threatened by Washed Up right now. And level 7 on both sides are nice. But the pressure is definitely, definitely on Granite Gaming. Uh, Billy gets another stack here also for his level 1. Ty on the other hand is rotating in for that too. Top lane, Ural is pretty much occupying two heroes on the opponent's side now. And talking about stacks, Hazorps is sitting at 18. Of course, he needs quite a bit more if he wants to complete the baseline and be safe. Doesn't get that yet. But Eternal is still occupying two heroes here, which of course means that there's a numeric advantage on the rest of the map for them so far. Yeah, Billy, they want to portal him in. And there's the portal. Good stun, but it's not enough. The Indomitable is there, and that should be the end of Henning. Yo, Tyrande is going to fall eventually. There's the axe to the face. That is a quick haircut that she gets there. 
and Billy is trying to make the play for Lauba, but he can't really get another kill in or another opportunity. Top lane pressure. Still quite a bit against the Eternal because of the original double setup that we had there, but now that he's in a one-on-one -on -one again, he should be able to make it. Double pick, by the way. I'm really liking it. Both of them riding in style. You gotta appreciate it. You gotta notice the details. The devil's in the details, ladies and gentlemen, and the pick is just the best mount in the game. I'm sorry to say, but it's a fact. Uh, sport Billy. Man is moving. Oh, Lauber. Oh, oh my god. He actually got a bit lucky that he didn't go farther in. But just as he engages, Mane comes from the side. And he, of course, didn't see Jaina. And now he's in trouble. And he might even die here. Yep, and he does. He just engages as Mane appears. And that is incredibly unlikely for him. Uh, unlucky for him. Now we're having, of course, the ley line into the Ring of Frost as a potential play. They're already trying to set something up here as they're making another attempt for the Dragonite. Especially Thirdle, of course, still holding the top. And Ty is doing whatever he can to interrupt this. But he can't really do a whole lot. He's sitting there and now he's getting wrecked by Mena as well. Ty doesn't have the teleport anymore. And that's the end of Liming once again as we're seeing the Dragonite capped. Yep. Level ahead, level 10 abilities on both sides, but things are starting to really go down south very quickly for Granite Gaming. They need to play around the horror abilities right now. They need to try and get the kills somehow, and they're playing around Curse Bullet. So they're trying to just get quick kills in with the Nuburak, having a good engage, dropping the Cocoon, maybe on the support here, maybe on Medivh, would probably be the best setup, and then go for the quick kill, and they have to. If they don't find these quick kills, they are going to be in so much pain here. And still, Hazu is just scouting out everything and he's continuing to get the stacks for his level 1 for his baseline. 22 already. The wall broken in the mid lane up to the top. We're still seeing Infernal Bully Meneldo around. Thwall, of course, has at least Ancestral Wrath since level 7. So that helps him to definitely get some of the hit points back and have the extra sustain against Urel. But Urel is just dominating that lane and I mean, so she should. She is and was always one of the best off laners for this map. So, well, for now, we're actually seeing Henning coming in there again, helping the team to burn down the Dragonite quite quickly. And really, outside of the kills, I mean, you look at the kills, and Washed Up isn't that far ahead. They haven't dropped a fort yet. They haven't really taken a massive talent advantage and a two-level lead or anything like it. But it's really just the way that game is going so far. At some point, Granite Gaming needs to break through the pattern if they really want to get ahead here. Because the entire momentum is swinging in favor of Washed Up. And the pressure has just started to amount from the beginning to this position. And it's not breaking at any point here. Half a level away from level 13. Eternal handily winning the top lane. It always forces rotations from Granite Gaming and that makes them lose the remaining lane. So they're just in no position where they can finally get a break. They just can't get a break here and this is the biggest problem for them. And if they can get that quick kill that we talked about after they had the level 10 abilities locked down, that would really help them a lot. But we're seeing now Medivh just having a massive impact in a lot of these scenarios, allowing quick rotations, allowing a quick move straight onto the camp. He already delivered a few kill opportunities to the team, and now they're getting more pressure through the camp over here. In the meantime, we're having the top right claimed. Level 13 talents are now ready. And of course, now the safe rotation over to the Bruiser camp on the left side after they took the bottom. Even taking the Siege Giant camp first, Mena in particular with Jaina is able to get all that damage out. But Lauba is actually there and tries to make the play, gets the cocoon, but the rest of the team is all of a sudden ready and ready to fight. A good stun on the other hand. <laughs> Henning again, he just knows where to drop these. <laughs> gets the double stun out. But of course that only slows them down and nothing else. Now they have the level 13. Maybe with a talent they would have even fought it. But like this, they didn't really want to. And for good reason, of course. Now well, Urel is still dealing with the top. The rest of the team is already busying themselves with another Bruiser camp. Down here on the other hand. 14 against 13. Yeah, shrines are active again. <laughs> and still, the approach to go straight for the wall here. So at this point we're just having them say, alright, we need to make a play here. We need to make something happen. Good throw, good taunt, but Anubarak actually goes and initiates. There's the ley line in the back. Ley line, where's the ring? There's the ring, but Ty moves away. Ty is sick on this. And again, the save. Perfect shield from Medivh. Meneldor is in too deep, and he's down. But Lauba is still looking for the kill. And again, it's shut down by Medivh. And that cocoon came too late, but Anna still falls. And is she the only one? No. We have Midi falling, and that is the reset on the baseline. 
baseline reset, but they are fighting between the towers. And those minions are going to evaporate at some point. Billy, on the other hand, has dropped two hits, a triple kill. And that's exactly what Granite Gaming needed. It is exactly what they needed here the entire time. They were looking for the kills, and they finally find them. They find four kills, and they break through the pressure that was mounting up to crush them in this third game. Great play here by them. Lauber was put into a bad spot and he just said, okay, fuck it, we go YOLO. And he turns around and just simply engages in deep. They have everybody else collapsing onto the targets too. And even with Hazwops getting all of those heroes saved initially, at the end of the day, it's a quad kill. They got everyone actually, didn't they? So they also really set the entire stacks that we're seeing on the side of Medivh. So that is going to make Hanzo's plays a lot more annoying. Top fort has been taken down. So at least it's a fort for a fort now. But yeah, that game is wide open now. That game is wide open. They're looking for the comeback. Lauba, Lauba. Without mana, the taunt. Oh, the ring. The ring against the back line. And that's the kill against Tyrande. And they're going to get also a Nuburak. But Medivh has fallen too. No stacks for Hazwops. It's not going to be a good game for Medivh. Not at all. Mena needs to be careful, but he gets the kill. And they're getting the second one in two up here at the top. That's four heroes down just as it seemed. Like Granite Gaming might get a foothold in the game. You know, all of a sudden seeing the exact reverse happening. We're actually seeing Granite Gaming getting absolutely slaughtered in the fight. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's brutal. It's brutal. The 16 talents are there, but this is of course going to be a Dragonite right now. As that's claimed. The mid lane is also about to fall. Another fort about to be destroyed here. And this is actually... This is, this is crazy. This is honestly nuts. As Granite Gaming is able to just finally, finally come back into this in any capacity, that's the outcome. Billy, on the other hand, is getting dropped very quickly here from the bullet. But then again, the Dragonite is so close that a quick punt can relieve the pressure by simply getting a Nuburak um, out of the fight. Yeah, well. Also, look at Mena. He's actually about to get his baseline completed, so that would finally allow him to also drop the Ice Block. Pretty important talent, actually, if you consider how the damage output is currently working here. Could easily Ice Block a lot of the damage that comes from Liming. Or simply a stun from Turanda. Otherwise. Hazorbs is really so far the odd man out here with this. He's the one that is suffering the most, just simply because he has no chance of getting his stacks together anytime soon. <laughs> because let's face it, that first kill against him, I think he was sitting at nearly 30 stacks. Well, that was definitely the big blow. This one is going to fall, one way or another. I mean, very quickly, this one is going to fall. And that is going to also create an equilibrium on the bot lane again. Because keep in mind, they dropped the earlier fort there too. Uh, well... That's the completion. There's the attack again for the back line. Anna saved for now. Lauba not so lucky. He's down. Cocoon on Medivh. That really helped for now. But the problem is it's just not enough. Mene goes in again. Goes for Swamp Grotta. And the save as Billy kind of pulls it back. Tai goes for the kill. But doesn't get it with a wave of force. Instead it's Graven that falls first. And now Li Ming herself is in trouble. Mena still moving away. Trying to make sure that Tai does never get close here. Uh, and eventually Ty falls. Uh, he's trying to survive. Mane himself is even still alive. And Maneldor goes down to another quad kill. Another quad kill. And we are looking at 14 kills to 5. 14 to 5 right now. Oh, and the plays again. Ty has played such a fantastic tournament, seriously. And he was making a couple of really nice moves there in the last fight too. But Mena is just too experienced. Ty was so close to drop Mena several times here with a wave of force, with those setups. But Mena is just dodging from left to right, weaving through those attacks and making sure that the kill just doesn't happen. And without the reset, there's just no chance for Ty to get actually out of that situation. Sacrifice himself eventually, once again. We're going to see the cocoon here. But Billy, I mean, we're talking about Mena a lot. We're talking about time. But look at Billy. He has made so many plays where he just saved someone a moment before they would have died. And the same is true for Hazorps. Yes, he has fallen. He doesn't get the stacks for his baseline. But those shields that we're seeing from him are just absolutely phenomenal. How many times was Mena about to die and then the shield comes in just in the last second? How many times did Maneldor try and make a play for Smexy and then Hazorps just ruined the hopes? Look how aggressive we're seeing the positioning right now from Granite Gaming being. They know they have to find those kills again. They got a four kills earlier and they have to find that opportunity once more because if they don't, there will be Storm Talons. 
Well, now we are seeing Smexy again in position. We're having Billy also on the spot. Everybody just waiting. Everybody just like buying their time. Especially since Eternal, of course, has the chance to push through the top lane with the Bruiser camp that they took and the catapults that are spawning here. They're still threatening Dragonite. And we have Medivh making the moves. 34,000 damage for Jaina. 33,000 damage, by the way, for Thrall. That's more damage than Greymane or Liming. So he's looking really strong with that. 14 kills against 5 so far. And Thrall is now the one that also has to deal with the top lane. Has to deal with the Bruiser camp here. And Uburak is rotating in to at least get one of those two uh, shrines. To make sure that's not a Dragonite. But of course that opens up the bot lane. Where we are seeing Urel starting to make the play for the next Bruiser camp. To push that through. And here's the level 20 now. Level 20 is in. And that gives us the deep chill. That gives us the Arcane Brilliance. And that gives us also Seraphim, Titanic Might, and the Nano Infusion. And this is a long, long time until we have Granite Gaming getting the level 20. Can they force the fight now? Medivh alone, if he just drops and drops the ley line, could make it. Ah, well, there's the portal, and they're going for Lauba. There is the first stun. There's going to be a taunt, and they're trying to get the kill, and the ley line is through. The ley line is through. The Sun Ring doesn't do anything here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. caught by the cocoon mid jump. Uh, that felt bad for Eternal for a second. Gets his ult through though, and takes the portal out to tap the fountain. But they're going for Maenaldor now. Billy is low, but it doesn't matter. They get the kill anyways, and that's Thrall dead. Good setup. They go for Haymane. The Blizzard just crushes Toronto, and now Greyman is way far out. Good push by. Murel and Swamp Grotta is not gonna make it. He's trying to make the play for Mena, but it's Lauba who delivers the kill. Jaina goes down, Ty is still alive, and so is Lauba. They're trying to somehow make something happen here. But bot lane, the keep is already gone because we have a double camp pushing through with this. Ty is still on the run against Billy, and Lauba in the middle of the map is still attempting to escape here. But there's the stun, there's the jump, and with the hoofs to the face, we're going to see Anubara crumble like a bug that he is. Yeah, Ty is also on the run. You can run, but you can't hide. And he's trying to run, but I don't think he's going to get away from this one. Nope. Oh, that's the end of that. Full five-man team wipe right here. And this is, of course, another Dragonite. And the bot lane is already there. Smexy with a pew-pew against the core. As we are seeing washed up trying to claim the title of being the Nutcrackers here. Uh, Smexy already dancing around here. He knows this is over. He knows there's no chance, but he is still gonna die. <laughs> oh, the, there's the dance. Maenaldor, of course, knows that this is futile at best. If you have a Dragonite moving in and already the Catapult's demolishing the core, you know that this is game. And this is it. Washed up. They take the victory with a 3-0 of the Granite Gaming in the Grand Final of the Nut Cup and crown themselves the Nutcrackers as they take the victory without dropping a map. GG. Well played and congratulations.